Hi, I'm Dr. KP and I'm a consultant rheumatologist practicing in Dubai. But what is a rheumatologist and what exactly do I do? There's no obvious organ system that we call room in the same way that there is if you're seeing a cardiologist who does heart specialty or a respiratory physician who does your lungs. Well, literally, room is a word that comes from ancient Greek and it translates roughly to either flow or movement. So people who had problems with their movement or the natural flow of their, their bodies, they needed to see a rheumatologist because they had rheumatism. In modern rheumatology, we've split this out into more defined areas. Now, for the most part, most of the conditions have uh, issues with the immune system. Now, it's a little bit important to differentiate immunology from rheumatology. So an immunologist often deals with faults within the immune system as its normal function should be. So if you have an immunodeficiency and you're prone to infections or an allergy, then you may need to see an immunologist. A rheumatologist will be someone that handles inflammatory conditions where the immune system, for some reason along the way, has become triggered to attack your immune system. So, I'm going to split these into, into six main uh, subdivided areas. The first is the core work that we do, we call it the bread and butter work of a rheumatologist, and that is arthritis. Arthritis being in joint, and then itis being inflammation. So, inflammation has quite a specific meaning to doctors. In common uh, language, we often talk about, oh, I've got inflammation here when we're referring to pain. But for a doctor, inflammation would involve redness, swelling, heat, pain, and maybe reduced function, so stiffness of the joints. We can also find usually abnormalities on blood tests or imaging. So the kinds of conditions that fit into arthritis would be rheumatoid arthritis, which is inflammation of lots of the small joints, and psoriatic arthritis, which can inflame joints in lots of different ways. We also get inflammation of joints that are less visible to the naked eye, so the spine can become inflamed. A key condition here would be ankylosing spondylitis, but that falls under a bigger umbrella of axial spondyloarthritis, which is all the types of conditions that can inflame the spine or joints within the spine. Okay, so what's the second area? Rheumatologists also manage conditions which we refer to as connective tissue diseases. So the connective tissues, they hold the body together and they can also be attacked by the immune system. So the muscles can be inflamed, myositis. Sometimes the muscles get inflamed alongside the skin. We call that dermatomyositis. There's complex conditions that can affect almost any part of the body. Things like systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, or commonly just called lupus. And those that can affect parts of the bodies, for example, the tear ducts or saliva glands. Conditions like Sjogren's. Sometimes the tissues can become scarred and thickened in conditions like scleroderma. Okay, so the third area that rheumatologists help to manage and treat is when the blood vessels themselves become inflamed. Immune cells move into the blood vessel wall, they cause swelling, and that can cause narrowing of the blood vessels. Obviously, if they narrow too much, it can uh, restrict the flow or block the flow to the organs they supply and cause damage. Rheumatologists tend to break down vasculitis according to the size of the blood vessel that's involved. So the fourth area that a rheumatologist helps to uh, diagnose and support is to do with bone health. Our bones, our skeleton, is being remade all the time and sometimes not being remade properly. Bones can become thin, which we call osteopenia, or very thin osteoporosis. Or maybe we don't have the building blocks we need to build strong bone in conditions like osteomalacia. So the fifth area that a rheumatologist helps support patients in is actually not inflammatory conditions. So 
there's argument as to if it's actually rheumatological, but rheumatologists see these conditions a lot. We now have to support people with these conditions, and often these conditions exist alongside our inflammatory conditions. So this is a condition like osteoarthritis. Even though it's called itis, there isn't actually a lot of swelling, redness, and heat. This is more to do with improper uh, repair following wear and tear of the joints. Pain conditions like fibromyalgia are often supported and managed by a rheumatologist. And joint flexibility conditions like hypermobility syndromes, hypermobile enesdamos. So though, what is the final and sixth category that a rheumatologist deals with? Well, these are the kinds of conditions that don't really fit well into any of the above categories, but they cause uh, widespread problems and there may be immune system involvement or they're very newly diagnosed. And often a rheumatologist works closely with other specialists to help treat these conditions. So that could include conditions like sarcoidosis, there are fever syndromes like familial Mediterranean fever, and some of these newly described conditions like IgG4 disease or vexus would fall into that category. So if you're having pain, problems with your movement, and you're not really sure what's going on and who to see, a rheumatologist can help to work out if you fit into one of these six categories, arrange for the right tests, and give you the support to help manage the condition that you're suffering from.